home video. Codependent relationships are no good. Just ask Renfield. He's been in a codependent relationship with Count Dracula for a century. But Renfield is ready to break free from his master. I mean his boss. Only Dracula isn't ready to let him go. At least not before opening up an artery or two. Or 200. Renfield. This is a movie I've been looking forward to since that very first on-set image of Nicolas Cage in Dracula makeup and wardrobe emerged. I mean, it's Nicolas Cage as Dracula, but not just any Dracula. Nicolas Cage's Dracula. My expectations for Cage's take on the Prince of Darkness were admittedly high, and I've got to say, he takes a bite out of the character like no other and drains it for everything that it's worth. The character of Count Dracula has been portrayed by some incredible actors throughout the years. Bela Lugosi, Gary Oldman, Frank Langella, Christopher Lee, just to name a few. But no other actor, living, dead, or undead, could have brought what Nicolas Cage brings to this Dracula. No other actor could have brought the levels of theatrical nuance and over-the-top gravitas that he does here. You can't help but love Cage's Dracula even if he wants to rip your throat out. Right off the bat, I was impressed with Renfield. We're treated to a flashback, which takes the actual 1931 Universal Dracula footage and superimposes Nicolas Cage's face over Bela Lugosi's and Nicholas Hout's face over Dwight Fry's. From there, we're introduced to Renfield's life and duties as Dracula's bug-eating familiar in Transylvania. However, the two soon relocate to New Orleans where, when not procuring victims for his master, Renfield takes part in Codependence Anonymous group meetings. By the way, Dracula's preferred victims are those with pure blood. You know, wholesome couples, nuns, busloads of cheerleaders... And if that weren't bad enough, Renfield finds himself in the middle of a shootout and ends up saving the life of a cop named Rebecca, played by Aquafina. Overtaken with the feelings of actually saving lives instead of being complicit in the taking of lives, lots of lives, Renfield decides to turn over a new leaf. But Dracula is only willing to let that happen over his undead body. So aside from Nicolas Cage's performance, which alone makes Renfield a must-watch in my book, it's also a gloriously gory and unabashedly over-the-top symphony of destruction and laughter. Humor, as we all know, is subjective, and the humor here is not going to be for everyone. Now, I can't say I had any laugh-out-loud moments during Renfield, but I certainly had my fair share of chuckles and belly laughs. A lot of Renfield's humor is of the fish-out-of-water variety. Hout handles these sequences with such straight-faced sincerity that you can't help but like him. Hout's interactions with Cage are also priceless. Their toxic relationship is a real trip. You almost get a sense that there is a mutual, I don't know, affection shared between the two. However, Dracula's narcissism and need for control muddies the water. Dracula is evil, after all. On top of the humor, Renfield is chock full of nicely choreographed action sequences and gore galore. How gory is it, you ask? A man is disemboweled and tries to force his looping innards back in. A man is punched with such force that his head explodes like a ripe melon. A man's face is ripped off. A man has both his arms torn off. And then those two appendages are used to beat and murder several other men. And that's really only scratching the surface here. In the end, Renfield sports a John Wick-like body count. On the downside, Renfield isn't quite as clever as it thinks it is. And there are some cringy moments. The stuff with Aquafina's character being the only honest cop on the force and trying to follow in her super cop dad's footsteps, but she's being held down by the man... Felt like I'd seen this all before, many times before. I just didn't care. And it took a little while for me to warm up to the Rebecca character, but I got there eventually. Whenever the movie detours from the Dracula and Renfield drama to the Rebecca trying to bring down the crime family that killed her dad stuff, it just brings the movie down. Shaving off a few minutes or more of that storyline and giving us more Renfield and Dracula moments or Renfield and the Codependence Anonymous group moments or literally Renfield doing anything 
would have been preferred. The movie doesn't take Renfield and Rebecca's relationship down the path of a full-blown romance, though, which I did appreciate. There's clearly something there between the two, but we really didn't need a love story jammed into the mix. And speaking of the mix, Renfield runs at a very brisk pace. Those 93 minutes just fly by. Renfield is a fun and highly entertaining movie. I had a big smile on my face nearly the entire time and enjoyed it immensely. I also enjoyed seeing Caroline Williams and Jenna Cannell in small roles. If you haven't seen Renfield, I highly, highly recommend it. If you have seen Renfield, please let me know your thoughts on the movie down in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care. And until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.